mark the anniversary, so too are protesters of the era. They were opposed to the conscri conscri sorry, conscription of young Australian men, plus this country's involvement full stop. A Brisbane filmmaker has interviewed more than 100 people who organised and took part in Vietnam War protests in the late 1960s and 70s. They were some of the largest in Australian history, as Peter McCutcheon reports. Whether we like it or not, we're right at this moment of Australia is at war. There will be years to search out and kill the enemy. A world away from the jungles of Vietnam, a generation of newly politicised youth were taking to the streets of Australia's capital cities to protest against an increasingly unpopular war. I was active against the Vietnam War. I was part of that generation. Half a century later, Filmmaker Larry Zeppelin is still fascinated by this radical chapter in Australian history. In the end, three federal elections, we were done. He's putting together a documentary, Hell No, We Won't Go, a labour of love with some help from donations. <laughs> It'll do that, Your Honour. My generation is getting to the age where we're going to drop off the twigs soon, and I wanted to record as many of those memories as, as possible and to make it available to all future historians and future filmmakers to use. Peace, that's all we want! One of those stories is of former art student, Ken McLeod. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the Helen Voisley from Castle Hill High School. There was an extraordinary sense of anticipation and solidarity, you know, there was a sense of, oh, we're all coming together. <laughs> McLeod was the convener of the New South Wales Moratorium, which organised a 40,000-strong protest march through the streets of Sydney in May 1970. There were uncomfortable moments. I mean, there were some sections of the media, for example, that were quite hostile. On the day of that moratorium, the Daily Telegraph came out that morning saying, if you see moratorium, people with moratorium badges cross over to the other side of the street. Don't have anything to do with them. It was a very difficult and emotional time, and anyone caught up in that really felt the pressure of it. In Brisbane, the anti-Vietnam protests were having a profound effect on a young country lad studying law and facing the prospect of being conscripted into the army. I saw what was happening in the moratorium campaign, the moratorium marches, I saw what was happening with Springbok. That period, I politicised me. In deeply conservative Queensland, with an effective ban on public demonstrations, the clashes with police not only politicised, but in some cases, radicalised. We used to spray paint churches at the early hours of Sunday morning with messages for the the incoming one Sunday Christians with messages like Jesus was poor and homeless like us. Um, we did a lot of that. We, we, we spray painted stop signs with stop the draft. I see it very, very clearly, very starkly as a fence with a gate in it between two paddocks. And on one side of that fence, I'm a child. And on this side of the fence, I'm an adult. And on that gate is carved the word Vietnam. Do you support the moratorium? Yeah. I'm here because there's a moratorium going on and I don't believe in it. I'm going to show my disapproval when it comes by. It's the only reason. Now, from what all my mates were shot in Vietnam, mate. You ain't that funny, do you? You ain't that funny, do you? You couldn't see a bigger clown in the circus than what is it? It was a time not only of youthful idealism, but also social conflict. And after the war, many Vietnam vets felt betrayed. The general feeling amongst the people that I've interviewed, and I've raised this point, is that they hold nothing personally against people who went, to the diggers who were sent to Vietnam. They were victims as much as 
the other side, uh, the Vietnamese were victims of war. And but they, was that made clear at the time, do you think? I'm not sure if it was made clear there, but we certainly, as a group, now say that diggers were, were victims. Ho! Ho! Ho Chi Minh! Dare to struggle! Dare to There were consequences for protesting. People were jailed, students expelled, workers lost their jobs. But most of the people Zetlin spoke to had no regrets. I'm asking you to clear this intersection or face the consequences. It is a life-changing experience to become part of a mass movement for change. It's kind of stepping off the curb from being a privatised citizen to being a public actor in a, thing, in, in a historical process. Zetlin has given the 108 interviews to the Australian War Memorial. Of all the groups and museums that I approached, they were the most enthusiastic. Because it sounds counterintuitive, doesn't it? The it war does. memorial, yes, yes, anti-war yes. protest. Exactly, but um, they have what, what they think they loosely call the Vietnam and Peace Collection. And that's where it's gone, where all this footage is gone. We want to stop this rotten war in Vietnam. I think Larry's film is a really important historical document. It's part of our history that's too easily turned into a kind of one-dimensional um, impression of, of a very rich and formative period in Australia.